JJ Barnes and this is Jonathan McKinney. Hello. And God, someone <laughs> running there around. There goes the dog. She's off the leash <laughs> She's today. She's off the leash today. Um, we are your watching, writing, talking and dog walking with me, him and Molly Dog. Right. Um, and today we're doing a follow-up video to our non-linear introduction yeah so but we're doing a focus on flashbacks and how to write them and how to use them properly yeah um so yeah a few days ago you will have seen the video where we talked about non-linear storytelling we warned of the danger of potentially disrupting the flow the the tension that is increasing as you go in your story you know your, your viewer your reader is getting more and more intrigued and then you whip them away to somewhere and else. you take them somewhere else and they're like oh for god's sake so in order to prevent that from happening, specifically in the uh, in the example of using flashbacks, so not so much your Pulp Fiction style series of vignettes that are interlinked, but your you've got your main story yep. and your backstory, which you are showing your reader um, via your flashbacks. Two timelines. Two I mean, timelines. One between the two. Yeah, the way that you fix this problem, the way that you prevent your reader feeling like you are removing them from the thing that they're interested in is you have to layer in intrigue first. Make the flashback something they want to go to. Yeah, so there is an interesting aspect of your story that you are withholding from your uh, from your reader. So they are starting to wonder what is the answer to this thing that they're starting to wonder about. And the thing is, if you have them wanting to go into the flashbacks because it builds because up. there are answers in there. There are answers, it builds up the, the excitement of the present day timeline. Right. Um, it gives them what they are looking for because if you have them going to the flashbacks just because because you're interested in what you, happened back there you want to know and you like writing about yeah. it you're ignoring what your audience wants yeah so you fix it by as we say um, you you tease a mystery something like a, a, a hidden past something that that will explain turn around <laughs> just turn the camera around a second <laughs> oh she goes she is uh, she's having a lovely time. She's lolloping free. So yeah, you want to tease, you want to you want to promise your reader that they will find out the answers that you're posing to them, the question answers to the questions you're posing to them uh, back in your previous timeline, which gives you the license to go there yourself, tell the story that that informs your present story, and this is some muddy ground we're it walking is on. some muddy ground and some people will say don't do it at all don't listen to them because yeah because i um i do like a good flashback yeah um i like i said i said before i've written them Can we take um, a wrong turn because this is muddy it's muddy as hell yeah go that way okay. less muddy okay um <laughs> um i You've yeah used them. Uh, i've used them i do like a flashback i also like um lost for the use of flashbacks yes yeah, yeah um Obviously, Lost has a lot more going on than... Oh, God! Jesus <laughs> Christ! Thank you. <laughs> a lot more than just flashbacks, but the I like how they develop the intrigue in the characters. It builds your interest in who they are, what their secrets are, yeah. um, things and Lost, like that. Lost do... The writers of Lost do use the technique we're talking about, the intrigue, but because they are so reliant on flashbacks, they can't use them as frequently as you should if you're writing a novel. Yeah, of course. Um, sometimes it will literally just be that they fix on somebody's face, you know, somebody's face, and then go back to show you some, something from their history. This is, <laughs> we should take a break and come back and finish this in a minute. Okay, we'll be back. Right, so we're back. <laughs> we have a slightly more wet foot situation than we had before. Um, but anyway, so in Lost, they'll, uh, they'll use, the writers will use um, a glance into somebody's face looking all stern and far away and then you go back with a bit of music that wishes you back. That's fine because they're in a hurry, they've got a lot of flashbacks to use. Um, a worse example is probably Arrow, um, which yeah. I don't know about the later seasons of it, but early on... I fell they, off um, Arrow. They, yeah, well they kept going back to the island where Oliver Queen was stranded and... With his beard. Yeah, um, I mean, again, on an island, um, stranded on a desert island. But yeah, he um, the the flashbacks in that weren't controlled very well. Yeah, and the, was... the show was incredibly popular, so yeah. it didn't inhibit it, but it could have but perhaps been more. But I was interested in present day Arrow. Yeah, I I was when we kept going back. I yeah. was like, I'm, 
And it I didn't, don't. yeah, it didn't help that the story on the island had to keep getting increasingly ridiculous to to justify them continually going back there. And sometimes they would try and tie it to the, the present day, but that is very difficult. Yeah, I think it was, I agree. you know, it probably cost the show a little. I mean, obviously they got eight seasons or so. Yeah, and a huge and like, fan base which loves it a bit. So it didn't cost it a lot. Yeah, and just because it didn't work for us. That fan base could us, have been bigger. Yeah, if it didn't work for us, doesn't mean it didn't work for everybody, as you say. But I think the the show would have been better if they'd been more careful with how they'd use the flashback. I agree, 100%. So that pretty much sums up the, the piece of information we wanted to give you today. Yeah, make it um, so your audience wants to go to the flashback yeah. by making it relevant, by making it intrigue. Yeah. So that when you go to the flashbacks, it's not, oh, okay, another yeah. one of these to get through. Yeah. <laughs> it's, oh, good, we're going to get answers to this thing that we're wanting to know yeah. about. Yeah, and also keep your reader wanting to know more. So when you do go back, don't explain everything. Then you're just informing what's happening in the present too much. Um, just yeah. keep teasing. Yeah, and... just drip feeding through the flashback, yeah. drip giving them what they want. Yeah. So, you know, it's less is more and don't give them everything and yeah. all that sort of stuff. Yeah, you want to know, uh, you want to pose the question, what is going to happen both in the future of your story and in the past? Because otherwise there's no reason to go there. If yeah. your reader doesn't want to know what happened in the past, isn't interested, then don't go back. Exactly. Um, which is a good piece of advice to finish on. I agree. So um, thank you very much for watching our flashback specific episode of Writing, Talking and Dog Walking. We'll be back with another one soon. Absolutely right. Um, what else? Um, if you can like this video. Yes, please. Little thumbs up thing and subscribe to our channel. We're watching our um, subscriber rate grow. Which is and great. It's really, we really genuinely appreciate it because it, it's what we're working for and your support matters, so thank you. Yeah. Um, if you want to talk to us, either drop us a comment below and ask us about any writing questions or any books, TV shows, films specifically that you're interested in. And we will do a video on them and do our best to answer any questions or ideas right. you want us to explore. Um, you can find us on social media. I'm Judy Ann Rose and he's John Muck on Twitter. All the links are going to be in the description down here, so have a look and you can go to www.sirenstories.co.uk you can find links to all the books we've written you can sign up there and win free things every month and there's our podcast and there's all sorts of things that's coming up so go check that out and we will be able to keep in touch with you so thank you very much nice one goodbye bye